All right, guys, we are live here uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin now. Uh, this is the pre-show for President Trump, not only here in Green Bay, but also in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where he is expected to speak in just about an hour uh, to a crowd there in Michigan about the border and the crisis that we have at our southern border. So we'll go ahead and pre-show uh, that from here. And also President Trump, after he's done uh, in Michigan, is going to make his way here to Green Bay and talk to, well, let's take a look at the crowd. A, a ton of people are here all ready to get into this uh, convention center here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So the doors open up here shortly, and they'll start to funnel everybody in. We're going to talk to some of the people here, find out exactly what is on their mind. Now here in Wisconsin, it is election day here, and we'll talk about uh, not only why it's important to show up to the polls for this presidential election, what else is on the ballot here in Wisconsin, and also, more importantly, how we can win in November. It is crucial uh, for President Trump to take this state in November, and so much has changed. We're going to unpack a lot of stuff that's happening in Congress right now. Uh, so the majority is, is almost slimmer than ever. And one of the reasons why is for a representative here in Wisconsin. We'll get to all of that, but first let's talk about one of our partners for today. That is the Birch Gold Group. We've got the inflation, a national inflation, an average inflation of over 17%. We've got food prices going up. We've got gold going to uh, you know all-time highs, which is wonderful. And one way to protect your savings is not just to throw it in the market and on a, on a wing and a prayer, but also hope that you put it in the right spot. Well, gold traditionally has done really, really well. So we want you to, before we get things started today, go ahead and text the words Trump to 989898. That is the Birch Gold Group. They'll send you a free information kit on how you can get started in gold, silver, and precious metals. They've got an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. They are the ones to call when it comes to trusting your money and investing in gold. That is the Birch Gold Group, a proud sponsor of today's program. Now, like I said, today is election day here in Wisconsin and a couple other states as well. We'll start to uh, unpack some of those totals uh, as the day goes along and maybe get some, some, uh, some, some exit polls, some data out to you as well. Now, when you look at what's on the ballot here in Wisconsin, it's really important to note that one of the initiatives is to take uh, private money out of public elections and if you just give you a great example if you can just look at what mark zuckerberg with facebook uh did with the 2020 election of putting hundreds of millions of dollars into our elections and actually paying for certain facilities uh to operate so uh it's on the bill here uh, to eliminate private money in public elections and there's a couple other election based initiatives on the ballot today in Wisconsin. It's so important that we clean up uh, the elections. We all know what happened in 2020. We all know uh, the results of some of the uh, really reckless election policies that several states had. And a lot of those policies were due to a direct result of the COVID, the lockdown, the mail-in ballots, the absentee ballots, all of that, the drop boxes, uh, the voter rolls that are ghost phantom votes, if you will, people that don't even exist. That is some of the reasons why we saw these states go uh, a different direction. So that is on the ballot today. We'll talk to these good people behind me. But first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my way over here. I said earlier we had a chance to uh, speak with you. First of all, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is Jody Bauer. I'm from Amro, Wisconsin. Well, I live in Amro, Wisconsin, okay. about an hour from here. About an hour from here. Today is Election Day here in Wisconsin. Yeah. I'll first start off with this with your friends, family, neighbors, people in church, co-workers, is everyone getting out the vote uh, this year so far? Uh, so far, as far as I know and everything, we're all voting for President Trump and we're all voting the right way to vote. You know, we want to we want to save this country, so we want him in office. You know, I mean, I, I would love to have President Trump in office forever, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think we'd all love President Trump in his ballot in it forever, his policies rather. Um, what has been the greatest thing that President Trump did in office? What was one particular policy that really impacted your life the, the most? Well, I would say the economy. First and foremost, always the economy. Infl inflation was low. I mean, gas prices were low. 
you know, food prices, everything. You you could you could pay your bills and still have money left over. You know, we don't have that now. People are struggling to pay for rent, you know, mortgages, car payments, and just to buy food. I mean, the government's creating these these apps so that people can go and charge food in the grocery store because they're maxed out on their credit cards. I was just going to say we, we can't live like that forever, and I mean, it's it's killing a lot of people. People just cannot cannot afford anything right now. I think it's really hitting some of our seniors that are on a fixed income. Yeah. Seniors that have a, you know, they, they don't necessarily have the ability to go out and get a second or third job. Right. And so when the cost of living goes up, it really hits them hard. Well, you know, I took an antibiotic four years ago and it, it destroyed a lot of my health internally, my central nervous system. And the supplements that I take every day have now tripled in the last uh, two years plus. So, I mean, everything is going up. I can't even imagine seniors trying to afford, you know, medications that they need or, or health, you know, health care that they need. So um, it's, it's to the point where people are just, we're fed up. We're fed up. And, and this border, this open border coming in and giving our jobs and everything to illegals and, you know, kicking our veterans out of veterans' homes. I mean, we, we, we've just had enough with everything. You're probably taking a look right now at a double box, if we have that up, of Grand Rapids, Michigan, where the president is in Michigan today to talk about the border uh, and the disastrous policies under the Biden administration that has really affected not just, you know, border states and border cities, but all the way up here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, yeah. you guys have felt the effects as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're letting people in all over the state, too. You know, I mean, it's that's jobs. That's that's everything. They're taking people out of uh, students out of schools to let illegals stay in the schools. I mean, it's it's everything. There, there's I could give you 17 reasons of of why we love President Trump and what he's doing for our country. He is really the only one that is going to save this country for us, we, and and we're, we all stand behind him. Let's so. talk about Wisconsin politics for just a second. One of the things that's on the ballot is to take private money out of public elections. And I give the greatest example would be Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook yes. pumped hundreds of millions of dollars in several states. Five Give me your feelings on that. In Wisconsin. So, yeah, I mean, 100 uh, percent. We need we need them out of this completely because that was election interference, really. You know, and, and we need fair and you know free elections we need to have you know uh transparency in everything we need we need to be able to vote and and have our vote actually you know count so yeah i'm 100 percent against getting you know having zuckerberg or anybody else be part of our elections here before before i get to your fabulous outfit i want to ask you your thoughts on uh these lawsuits that president trump is going through he just did the bail yesterday uh, for the case in New York. In your circle of influence, once again, how has these lawsuits affected his popularity? And do you think it's even helped with people that were even agnostic, that weren't even politically minded, but they see the weaponization of our Department of Justice and others against this president? Well, you have to look at like the black community, for example, you know, what they're doing to President Trump, that's really influencing a lot of the black vote because they're like, wow, if they can do it to a, a president of the United States, you know, what they've been doing to us for many years, um, you know, this whole, these these whole trials and everything, it's to, to bring everybody that are the actual criminals out into the open and expose them. And, you know, he's, he's setting a lot of precedents here and we love him. None of us are going to back down. You know, we are always going to support President Trump and the, the entire Trump family. You know, the, the, I mean, Don Jr., Eric, I mean, the kids are great. You know, we, we love Trump. This is Trump country. And, uh, you know, we're all going to be here to support him. And we know he's going to get through these trials and come out shining. Yes, shining bright and everything because and we'll be with them as well. believes anything no, from nobody believes any of this stuff going on no. here, but okay so let's events. yeah so let's talk about your outfit here uh see, see if denver see if we can get a good shot of that you've got this nice ribbon theme that's kind of going down the dress uh then across the front as well 
Tell me about it. Did you make it? What was the inspiration behind it? Obviously, President Trump, but walk me through that. Well, when I first purchased, I purchased this material in a dress, and it, it looked terrible on me. The dress that I originally got was awful, so they sent me another one, and I thought, well, I don't want to throw away the material because it has Trump on so it. It started with a, a bad dress, right? It okay. was, a, it was a, a, a dress that looked like a tent on me, and I thought, well, I don't want to wear a tent to a Trump rally and stuff, but I wanted, I wanted the material. So there was a woman in Berlin, Wisconsin, who makes wedding dresses, and her name is Bonnie Neiser. I called her up and I said, would you want to make me a Trump gown? And she's like, well, I never made one before. So I showed up at her house. I didn't even know she was a Trump supporter. Showed up at her house and she just took a piece of paper and I drew out the dress. I said, this is what I want. I kind of want it to look like the Spanish style a little bit with the ruffles. I went and bought all the- shot of that, Denver. Go down here and see that. Let's see if we can hold on that for a second. So, so it's got, uh, it does have kind of a, a salsa flair to it, a, a fiesta <laughs> type. Because I'm kind of sassy, so I thought, well, I wanted something that looked a little a little sassy and everything, too. But, yeah, she made it perfectly the way I wanted to. This is a diamond and silk pin in the middle. You know, I, we miss diamond, of course. And, uh, you know, one of our wonderful outspoken, you know, Republicans and everything. So, I mean, I, she did a beautiful job on it. But... So I, I love to come here, but I would really like to have him sign it. That's kind of my goal. So, so the goal here is so if President Trump, if you're watching us right now, we can, I would imagine, find this uh, young lady out in the crowd, Jody, out in the crowd, and, and get a pen and sign it. Well, thank you so much. And, and like I said, continue to fight for President Trump. Uh, get the word out and, and, and show the support. And like I've always said, just show up and vote on this election in November, and we win. We've got the votes. We've got the message. We win. Right. And, you know, People like us are going to show up rain, sleet, snow, any kind of weather. I mean, I've been at how many rallies now in all kinds of weather, and it's like we are, are we're going to come out and support him because we love him. I'm glad it's indoors today. It's a little cold outside. Yeah. It's, you it's you not know it, when they actually have a name for the winter storm coming, I think it's Cora, I think it's what it is, you know that uh, you're still up in the north. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. God bless you. you know, Uncle Jams is over here. Familiar face. Back, so. Familiar face? You bet. How's it feel to be uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin right now? It feels good, and I haven't been keeping up. I've been in, in Florida, and everything's been going on up north. And But I'm in Chicago, so I figure, okay, this is great. And But you've been keeping me informed. I like the way you handle it. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, I really have. We tried. Hey, would this crowd surprise you for a Tuesday? And, no, uh, it never surprised me, especially Wisconsin people. But this is nothing. This is like picnic weather. So. Yeah, this is nothing. Yeah. You're out here, and uh, God bless. Thanks for everything you do. Enter yes, go Brandon. Entertain the crowd here. How are we doing? We're doing, we having a good time? Yes, we're having a very good time. And I would imagine, did you already cast your vote for President Trump today, or you did early voting? or? We did today. Yeah, to, to vote today. What was the lines like? I was the first, first one in line at 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, that's great. That's great. First one in line. 150 miles north of here at Eagle River. Uh, we talked about an initiative earlier about taking private money, like Zuckerberg, Facebook, out of public elections. Did you did you see that on the ballot? Today? Yes. And you're obviously against you're the, very 100 percent. I think it's going to lose. I mean, I think that's basically going to pass. I hope it does. I hope it does. We have to have a fair election. This is America, for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been such a a disastrous Biden administration. Which policy specifically of the Biden administration has affected you guys the most? The border. The border. You know, all they can call that when they all came over and ran, almost ran our guardsmen's over, breaking down that fence. That's not illegals coming in. That's an invasion. A violent invasion, if you will, a judge in El Paso, a judge in El Paso said he was not going to prosecute those individuals. He let them go. Yeah, let them go. Yeah. And Two tears. the heads in of our citizens in Georgia now. And meanwhile, people that walked on the Capitol on January 6th remain in prison, in jail. Pro-life people that went to an abortion clinic to pray for people walking into a clinic are now sitting in a jail in D.C. waiting for trial. These are people that peacefully prayed for human life, and they are in jail 
people who break federal laws, combat, border patrol people, they walk free. Two-tier system. What they're doing to uh, Trump is outrageous. It's drummed up charges. I don't care what anybody says. I 100% agree with you. They don't want him to campaign. They don't want him to be president. Yeah, that's it. And us people have to stick together and realize that Trump is our future. Not for him or us, for our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I know that your circle of influence all agrees with you, I would imagine. Friends, families, neighbors. Not, there's some family members that don't. You know, but everybody's entitled to their own opinion. You know, I, Trump says it as it is. He doesn't peek around the bush or try to go on one side to please the other side. He says what's in his heart and, you know, just take it. His policies were great. Mm -hmm. I, I, you're, you're basically echoing everything that I know of our viewers are thinking about right now. I uh, can't help but notice a, a, a veteran. Thank you for your service, oh, obviously. I'm 13 months in Korea, 13 months before that. Let me ask you a question about our military and the way under a Biden administration, what they have done to our military and the leadership. It's a disgrace. He's Biden's senile to have bisexual people advertising to get into service now. When we fought and put our lives in line, and now he's having them advertise for our great services. It's a dirty disrespect. The greatest generation fought World War II. They are rolling in their graves of what is happening now. Yeah, yeah. Amen to that. Well, uh, what he has done to our military, and I think that what he wants to do is send our sons and daughters over to Ukraine and fight some foreign war over a piece of land, and that's something that I know that no one is for. I mean, no one is for that. That's because his son put millions and millions of dollars in his pocket, and now he's getting a kickback from the Ukrainian people to get yet. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the story of Ukraine. All right, so one last final question, I'll let you guys go. On day one, what should President Trump do in office? Seal the border. Yes. Border wall. And send the illegals back. Number one, the Justice Department take the top one-third off and get rid of them. The FBI get the top one-third off and get rid of them and put some honest people in it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, and January 6th, you brought up a good point. Uh, there, there are so many people right now that are sitting in prison waiting for, not even been citizens yet, waiting for uh, sentencing and, 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 and while they're rotting, meanwhile, Violent people on the streets are let go. The Lake and Riley is a great example. That individual was detained prior to uh, his capture there in Georgia with Lake and Riley was was released. And so we're letting criminals on the street, and we're locking up patriotic Americans. We're keeping them in prison. And the immigrants in Chicago now can carry guns without ID, without any FOID cards, without anything. It's it's crazy. I you think just, the mayor for that. They yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's a piece of work. Yeah. He's uh. Yeah, not a good you, you look at this country and you go, how did we? I mean, how did we get here so quick? I mean, you figure it's it is unrecognizable on every aspect. Everything the left has touched, they have ruined. Edu Department of Education, we which ruined. which by the way, President Trump says he's going to get rid of the Department of Education, for which oh, thank God, and a lot of people support that. But the military, our education, our foreign policy, there is no foreign policy right now. Nope. My uh, cousin's a nuclear engineer right now for the military, and he says he's out. He just turned 27, and he's in Guam right now, and he says, I'm going to be out in three months. He's had enough. My daughter just left Guam. Mm -hmm. She's in the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, there's he's just... A, a nuclear submarine. He builds nuclear submarines over there in Guam, so... Mm -hmm. And he wants to get out. Yep. He said it's ridiculous, all the uh, all the woke stuff they're trying to teach these kids now. He's like, I just want to do my job and be he done. Wants to serve, do his job and serve the country at this point. It's like Afghanistan was so bad, that's already forgotten. Every day it's something worse and worse. And it's like crazy. Yeah. Well, he it's, says that, uh, that uh, we never leave a soldier, a man behind. 
and look what they did in Afghanistan. They left everybody behind. And all the equipment, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we wonder how uh, these terrorist organizations around the world have these helicopters and high-tech weaponry. They got them from Afghanistan. We left them there. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, what else are we going to do? I mean, how much of a disgrace can Biden possibly be? You know, I saw something yesterday that this, uh, the U.S. intelligence agencies warned that there was a there was going to be an attack by ISIS inevitably on our soil and I, what's your thoughts on that I'm sure it's going to happen I mean they're coming through the border I mean that's been proven it's not it's not it's when inevitable it's, that's yeah, going to happen it's not, well, when it's if yeah it's going to happen and God only knows what's going to happen you know I, I just feel sorry for citizens it just it just gets me mad it just gets worse and worse hey man we think What's that? Release, Release the J6. Yeah, it's really sad what, the, what they've done uh, to them so much. All right. Well, well we lost some of them, too. I mean, some of them have taken their own lives because they can't take it anymore in there. So release the J6. It's sad is what they've done. All right. We're going to make our way down there. Thank you so much for spending a couple of time with me. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. Yeah, go Trump, right? I tell you what, let's walk through this way. Here we go. How are we doing? We're going to make our little way through here. How are you doing? Are you doing all right? I'm doing great. Why are we here today? To support our pre president and our future president. Now, today's election day. I would assuming that you've already either you voted today or did you? This morning. Yeah. Are you a, you're a same day type of person to vote? Correct. Yeah, like so, so am I. So same am I. Day. Yeah. Yeah, when the, some of the machines weren't even working this morning oh, already. Oh, hang on a second. Don't tell me that. Well, but really? There was a paper jam, but it got taken care okay, of. Okay, a paper jam. So we'll, we'll it take wasn't it. an Arizona paper jam where like no, none of the ballots no, went no. the printer. I love your station. I watch you all oh, the thank time. You, appreciate it. Thank yep. you very much. All right, so on day one, uh, if the President Trump often watches this broadcast before he flies out or on the plane, what would you want him to do on day one in office? Probably address inflation issues, the border. <laughs> Um, and endless spending in our government. We're not helping out the people in the United States. We're helping out all these countries. So America first. America first. That's why I'm here. And best president we ever had. And he's going to win in November. Yeah. No doubt. There's no doubt. There, no doubt. Yeah. yeah now, it's, it, it could come down to Wisconsin when you think about it. Uh, right now, Wisconsin's not as, I mean, Trump's up in all the swing states. Wisconsin is the slimmest margin, which I think the polls sometimes are a bunch of crap anyway. Right. Well, you and I both know more people support President Trump than Joe sure. Biden. Right For now. sure. But it could come down to Wisconsin, but I feel confident that uh, you guys will show up in November and make it happen. Heck yeah. He's going to win. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Thank, how you doing? I have my daughter here too. Oh, your daughter. daughter. Now, hang on yeah. a second. Is, is she skipping school today? No, she's not. College and yeah. I'm in college. Yeah. yeah, I'm here with my mom supporting Trump. We went to the 2020 rally out at yep. the airport when they stole the election yep. in 2020. Facts. Can, okay. yep. can I say yep. that on yeah. this network? Because well, that's exactly what happened. It's exactly. What, okay, so let's talk. So when you're call, you're in college. So right, uh, how many Trump supporters are amongst your circle in college? Not many. Not my not college not. is pretty liberal. I find myself pretending to be a liberal to pass my class. How do you do that for a second? I don't, I, it's, it's hard, it's hard. Just wear a mask, wear a mask. Right, right. Put like a little rainbow sticker on yourself. Right, I know, it's hard, I have to pretend, but it's all about feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, complain about your feelings just one time a week, yeah. and they'll say, oh, she's, yeah. she's a liberal. They'll take it easy on you, yeah, take it easy. right? But in all seriousness, what do you think, kids your age, what's your biggest concern as a young voter? I don't. Young kids, you're, you're, you're never gonna be able to move out because no, you can't afford anything. I can't afford to move out. Yeah, you think America? Look, okay, okay, hold that thought because I just paid some tuition today on that, uh, and it's breaking me. Can she do the American dream? Can she buy a home? With look at the interest rates, look at inflation. No, wages. She wouldn't. Our our son is renting right now, and he wants to buy a home, and he he's not gonna be able to afford it. I mean, it used to be rent to own when I was young, and now it's rent to survive, the rent, that, that's insane. Yeah, do you feel the same? Thing? Yeah, I'm frustrated I'm never gonna be able to move out. And start but how about buying a car, things like that? I mean, it's just- Same, same thing, thing. yeah, you, you can't afford it. Yeah, we, we can't afford the great things in the country because of what Biden's done to the, the economy.
in our world. He's horrible. And he's horrible. I like the fact that she understands that because a lot of a lot of a lot of people your age. She was raised right. It's also common sense and open your eyes, right? Yeah. Young kids need to open their eyes. They're getting brainwashed in school. Have you lost any friends over your? I would say, yeah, a couple. But I know my rights and I stand up for what I believe. I love it. We need we need more more students like you on campus. Well, have you got involved in Turning Point or anything like that? What's that? Turning Point USA. Are you involved in anything like that? They're the ones that gave us the pins. Oh, that's Not, right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a good thing to get involved with. She doesn't have time. She's working two jobs to survive, going to school, paying for her own school. She doesn't have time to do, you know, more volunteering, yeah. get more involved, yeah. unfortunately. I want to get more involved. It's just, right, it's hard. All right, well, go to Turn the Point. Go check it out and get involved. But thank you so much, and thanks for coming out here today. Yeah, what are you studying, by the way? Uh, business and accounting. There you go. Business and accounting. We put on your resume that you went to a Trump rally and you supported them, and they'll, they'll hire you, I'm sure. That'll be the uh, diversity hire. They'll hire for you. Because, yeah, thank you very much. All right, what are we doing? What are we doing? How are we doing? That's a better question. How are we doing? We're doing great. How yeah? are you? I'm enjoying myself. I'm glad I'm in, I'm in Green Bay. We are, too. It's, it's a little colder than I thought it would be. We're used to it. It's a little, you know, but it's, it's going to warm up a little bit, right? It's decent yeah. spring weather. Here. It's decent spring weather. All right, day one, President Trump does what when he gets in office? Close the border. Yeah. Take care. Close the border. Yeah. Close the border. Yeah, absolutely. Get the mass deportation, right? Mass, mass, yeah. Um, what has been one of the Biden policies that have really affected you the most? I mean, cost of living, inflation, uh, inflation. Yeah. You know, I think it's kind of comical when you have the the, the White House try to convince us that it's everything's okay. Like, the, we're doing great. Don't complain. What are you complaining about? Everything's great. Steaks. I miss eating steaks. And How does that make you feel when they sit there and try to tell you that life is fine? It feels, it feels awful. It does. It makes me angry because I think they're out of touch with what the average American is going through right now. Absolutely. We work 40 plus hours a week and we suffer more the more, the more time we put in. You want a little extra? Too bad. They're gonna take it off the top. Yeah. My raises. You can't even tell I got a raise. Which, which, so. By the way, April first kicked off a twenty dollar an hour minimum wage in California for fast food workers, and that is for locations that have sixty or more locations. So not everybody gets it. And that just, the mom and pop places aren't really affected by that. How does that make you feel? Because in a way, if you live in California and you go to McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever, that Happy Meal now that is normally maybe five ninety five for your kid, it's going to be more like ten ninety five for your kid. So everything's going to be a little bit more expensive. But you know, it's, it's, I just won't eat there. That I think the consumers not is going to react by not and going they have there. Some tax of for what is it? Their insurance and stuff when you go to certain restaurants. No. Well, let's just all pray that President Trump gets in in November. That's all we can do. And show up to vote. Show up to vote. You'd be surprised. Everyone needs to vote. Vote. Go vote. Go Trump's going to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. So come on down this way. How are we doing? How are we doing? Hello. Oh, you're watching us right now. It makes it, That reminds me. Hang on. I turned them on to your channel just a minute ago. All right. So here's a great example of why you need to download our app. You, is this the app or is this YouTube? Or uh, this app. So go to our app, go to your Google, thank you very much, your Google, your uh, your Apple store, your iPhone store, things like that. Download our app and you can take this road on the show wherever you go, we'll do it live. Uh, also, don't forget to talk about 1775 coffee. Who needs their coffee in the morning? I definitely need my coffee in the morning. I, 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 you don't even want to see me. Uh, go check it out, Mountain Dew. I do love Mountain Dew, too, though. Uh, 1775 Coffee, a proud sponsor of this uh, network and today's broadcast. The information to get involved uh, with your cup of coffee. Not only is it sourced from the best beans, but also they are a patriotic company. They love what we stand for. They love the values of this country. And guess what? They love President Trump as well. So go check it out. You can order. You can be on a reoccurring as well. The information is on your screen. Put that promo code in there. Save some money. 1775 Coffee. Start your day right with the best coffee and 
more importantly, you're supporting a very patriotic company, 1775 Coffee. All right, day one, Trump gets in office. What does he do? Deal with the immigration. Ship them all. It's all border related. Border related, yeah. economy right after that. Yeah. You know, sign a whole bunch of executive orders, put it back where he had it. Yeah. Now, what do you think about all these lawsuits going on in New York, uh, all across the country, Atlanta? Delaying election, you know, it's it, election interference for Trump. Yeah. You know, it's just delaying him from doing rallies like we got here at Green Bay. Yeah. Did you guys go out and vote already? Yep, I voted this morning and drove three hours up here. What? Wow. Okay. So, what was the line like when this morning when you voted? Uh, it was right about at the door, I think. And were, at the vote, at the vote, at the polling. Oh, well, you're voting. Oh, I'm in a small town. I was number 27, and it was open maybe 20 minutes when I got there only. <laughs> you voted. Good. Count. How you doing? I voted. Good. You voted as well. Great. Great. I love it. I love it. Um, what would you want President Trump to do day one in office? Well, for one thing, I heard him say, close at the border, stop this border stuff we got going on. We've got over the percentage, if you look at 10 million people, if you looked at just 2% of those being terrorists, yeah. how many would that be? I mean, Well, you see a lot of young military age men coming across the border. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like that one uh, Chinese guy that they just had on a military base that they had to chase off here recently. Oh, yeah, definitely. Not yeah. New Mexico either. There's like 160 countries they're coming from. So it's, it's yeah. more than... What do you think about the president of Mexico saying, if you pay me this, I'll stop the, the, the migration here? you got to have someone he respects in there that he won't tell him that. If, you, if, he'll, if they'll pay you, they'll let him, right? And, but you don't pay him. Push him in the back pocket. Cartels are in him. There's no way that that amount of money, I think it was $20 billion, if I'm not mistaken, there's no way that $20 billion is going in the, in the pockets of... of, of, of the right people. It's going in the back pockets of the corrupt politicians, and and and, off, and I don't think that anyway it would stop to begin with. That's just make, that's just not going to happen. Well, how, how is it Trump can do it with nothing other than saying, "Look, you do this, we're going to do that." Bam. Yeah. You don't do that, we're going to do this, and that's the way you stop that. Yeah. And they wouldn't even play that game with Trump. Nope. <laughs> Trump is the ultimate negotiator. They would not even try this with President Trump. One last thing before I let you go: uh, the war in Ukraine. The conveyor belt of money that just keeps going over and going over to Zelensky. They need to push for peace with them people. They don't need to be spending money on that. Cause like they said, if everyone knows they're not going to win it. So you just has been no accountability either. You know, they don't know where half of that went. I mean, that's horrible in itself. You know, where did all that money go? And they, they couldn't tell you. It went through Ukraine and who knows after that. So you got to fix that up too, you know. Profiting from that are those that make the weapons and the ammunition and everything that they're sending over there. Yeah. And there's no telling where that stuff's ending up. I think it's going to be used against us. Well, that too. Yeah. Yeah. The money they re the money they released to Iran and all that. What do you think uh, Hamas and got all their money and all their rockets from from Iran and they got all that money freed up? So who's to say? You know, six billion goes one way, it goes ten other ways the wrong way. You know, so. There's a lot of seats inside, so I know you guys will have a chance to get inside. We appreciate it. Thanks for downloading that app and having you on there. <laughs> All right, let's flip that camera around. We'll show exactly what we're at. Hey, for just now joining us, we're in the convention center here uh, at the Hyatt in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we're getting ready uh, to give a pre-show to President Trump and actually in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, he speaks at about 2.30 there local time. And then, of course, after that, he will make his way here to Green Bay. So we've got a great crowd here in Green Bay waiting for him. But meanwhile, uh, we'll continue our coverage of President Trump, uh, who is going to address the border. And that's been really one of the top issues right now across the country is the border. Uh, the number one issue is the border at this point. Uh, and, of course, uh, we've seen the fallout, not only uh, the immigration, but we also see the increase of drugs, fentanyl, over 300 people a day die of a fentanyl overdose. Now, you would think that that would be a massive story, and you would think that they would try to get to the center of what's causing uh, this overdose, but quite honestly, that has been 
a non-story uh, at this point uh, from the mainstream media and also from the Biden administration. But uh, President Trump is doing his best to address all of those issues. And as you know, those issues are what these people are focused on. Uh, and that's why he is here. And that's why uh, these people are lined up uh, for all day. So I'll just keep making my way. How are we doing over here? I'm so glad you guys are here today. You look nice on a nice Tuesday. Glad to be here. We're from yeah. Escanaba. Es Escanaba. Michigan. Yeah. Well, President Trump is in uh, Grand Rapids today. He's going to got a brief a brief speech. He's then he's going to make his way over here. Uh, for someone who lives in Michigan, what is your some of your top issues there in Michigan? Border security affects us very much, and we're thinking that someday a bus full of people, illegal people, may show up in uh, Main Street. And we are working on it to keep the borders secure and working on election integrity, working on a lot of things. My program is pro-God, pro-life, pro-family, and America first. Oh, that's great. Well, based upon... Right here. This is my hat right here. It tells it all. Uh, based upon that shirt, I'm, I would imagine the DOJ wants to put you in jail because you're you're a, you're a domestic terrorist for that. So domestic terrorist. I'm glad you recognize me. <laughs> hey, we're all domestic terrorists at this point, right? We're all pro-family, pro-country. Uh, let's talk about the the pro-life issue. It's so important to so many people. And I said this earlier. There are pro-life people that went to an abortion clinic to pray for people going in to basically say, choose life. They sit in prison in, D in D.C. right now, waiting sentencing. It's just a sad story, but it it's so sad. It's the weaponization. It's incredible. Uh, so sh share your thoughts on that. Well, I'm an adoptive mother, and I have my first two children were born dead, so I am absolutely 100% pro-life and understand how precious life is. So I, uh, and the Lord is pretty clear about how he feels about, he was with us in the seclusion of our mother's womb. So let's be pro-life. We can't be Christians or Republicans without being pro-life. Well, I'm going to call Speaker Johnson out here in just a second because in that last bill that they was approved, there is a ton of money for abortion clinics that give abortion up to birth. So you cannot be a pro-life conservative speaker and still fund these radical pro-choice anti-life bills. You can't do it. Uh, for someone that was adopted when I was a, just a baby, so I appreciate it. God bless you. Very special that you have a special place in my heart for that. Uh, how about you? Uh, what are some of the biggest issues for you? Oh, just the price of everything. The yeah. groceries, the gas. It's just, hard. just It's hard. Yeah. It's very hard. It is. My mom is, uh, is a widow, lives at home, obviously, single, uh, fixed income. So any type of increases of anything to our seniors and people that are retired is massive. My biggest thing is the immigrants. There's millions of them over here, and who, who's going to pay them but us, the taxpayer? End up paying for them. They're not really immigrants. They're illegal aliens. Immigrants are people who are here legally. We're not anti-immigrant. We're anti-illegal immigrants. What's interesting, I have found that people that have um, come here from other, other countries the right way. Yes. From Turkey. From Turkey. They're, they're, we, we, uh, we, we do. Totally, yes, we do. Yes. We do. And they're very, you, people like you that came here the right way are angry at the ones that are breaking federal laws and getting all the benefits that all of us has paid in the system for. So I came 33 years ago legally with my visa, with my passport. It took me eight years to get my American citizenship. And I want to see the same thing everywhere in America. Uh, looks like we don't have a border anymore, even north side of the country. Yeah. And what else? Yeah. <laughs> what we we're, glad, we're glad you're here and we're glad you do the right way. The, living the American dream. Yeah. Let's, take a picture of Let's get a shot of that on the back. The land that God forgot, I'm sure to go to heaven because I've spent my time, my them in hell. Well. We appreciate your service in the military. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll continue our coverage here on the ground, but I do want to talk about our friends over 
at the Birch Gold Group. You know, investing in gold, silver, precious metals is important to secure your financial future. If you look at inflation, we've talked about the cost of living going up. We've also seen the price of gold go to all-time highs. So now might be the time to convert that traditional IRA into a gold-backed IRA. And our friends at the Birch Gold Group want to help you do just that. Just simply text the words TRUMP to 989898 and get your free information kit on how you can transfer that traditional IRA and put it in something a little bit safer. Put it in the gold, silver, precious metals. Our friends at the Birch Gold Group, the information for that is on your screen. Text TRUMP to 989898. That is the Birch Gold Group. All right, so if you're wondering where we're at, we're in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, President Trump is scheduled to speak here a little bit later this afternoon, but before that, he is stopping in to Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, and addressing an immigration uh, forum there. So we'll have that in full coverage, and that starts at 2.30 there, local time, 1.30 here. We'll bring that to you live as soon as it happens. And at the conclusion of that, we'll switch over everything over here, uh, and we'll be live here in Green Bay to bring not only the fan interaction that we've been doing, but also the great pre-program and President Trump speaking uh, here a little bit later. So we're glad you're joining us on this Tuesday. It is Election Day here in Wisconsin, so a lot of people go into the polls not only to, to vote for President Trump in the, in the primary, but also uh, to, there's some things on the ballot, like should we take Mark Zuckerberg? Let me ask you a question. Should Mark Zuckerberg and other people that own social media companies or just private companies have any influence or any funding of public elections? Oh, I, Absolutely no. not. It's ridiculous to think. one-sided anyways. One yeah. yeah. Absolutely ridiculous how much money that Mark Zuckerberg put into the 2020 election. Uh, obviously, it is all one side that, that we know how that is. So hopefully, uh, people here in the great state of Wisconsin go to the polls today and basically make sure that that will never happen again. That's one way we can do it. All right, we're going to keep making it. For uh, representing the good talk. Yeah, there you go. Nice to have the media on our side. Oh, we're on the side. Well, we. Oh, good. What's your what's your, what's your husband's name? Danny Lee. Mm -hmm. Well, he work? No, he's at home with my daughter, my seven-year-old. Hi, baby. What's yeah, Olivia. Oh, Olivia, your, your mom's here. She's having a great time. She's going to see President Trump. She's fine. Is Olivia in school right now or not? Homeschool. You're smart. Yeah, for <laughs> the obvious reasons why you're homeschool. Uh, well, I'm glad that you got a great husband. you got a great daughter. You guys enjoy your time there at home, and you'll be out as well. How about you? You're skipping work today or out no, here? I am. I have the day off today, day off. so, yeah. I always love it when you have a Tuesday rally during the week, and you see kids sometimes. Like, we had a, a younger kid up there. I'm like, are you guys skipping school today? Or like, what's going on? Uh, what a great – this will be – yeah, snow day probably. Uh, uh, great time to uh, to come see here. Okay, real quickly, NFL thing. Since you got a, a Packers shirt on, that's right. What are we going to do this year? I'm from New York, that's the whole thing. Oh, that's your thing. <laughs> so but originally, yeah, but originally uh, now I'm, now I'm in Escanaba. Okay, so you're a Packers fan? Yes. Are they going to have a good, good season this year? Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, well, hopefully you do. All right, we're going to make our way through okay. here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, All right. TV. Hey, there we are. Yeah. Hey, look at that. There we are. There we go. It's amazing. Another, is that on an app or is that on Rumble? Uh, okay. Oh, YouTube. Okay, YouTube. Okay, so once again, you can stream us anywhere you go. You can just download our app, go to Rumble, go to YouTube. You can do it, and that's exactly what this guy's done. Where are you from? Appleton, Wisconsin. Okay. What is the number one issue for you here in Wisconsin when you go to the, when you go to the polls and vote for Trump? What's the number one issue? We need to... Uh, have our uh, immigrants come across the border legally, not have us hardworking taxpayers paying for somebody. I'm all for helping others, but uh, we need to have that guarded and secured. Yeah. Yeah. This is too much. Yeah, the border is the number one issue in the country, and it doesn't matter if you're from Texas, you know, the border state, or all, all the way up here in Wisconsin, it affects everyone. Yes, uh, I work with a lot of people from Texas, believe it or not, and uh, what you see on the news is it's all okay, but. It's not okay, and I see. I talk to the people down there, and they're not okay with it, yeah. like we are here. Yeah. How does the Biden administration or his policies hurt you the most? I mean, immigration aside, the economy. I don't know what type of work you do, sure. but what what is? How has that affected your life? The cost of things. Everything's up twenty three, forty seven percent. So this this BS number of two to three to three percent inflation is garbage. We know it's much much higher. Total garbage. It's in teens, low twenties, in certain categories. Yes, absolutely. And 
Um, some people are fortunate enough to have jobs that it doesn't affect them as much, but that's not the majority of Americans. They're suffering. You talk about, I go to church, talk about egg prices. It's as simple as that. And people are struggling out there. So we need to make it better. And the four years that Trump was in, uh, in house, it was better. And 401ks were 26% up. So. Not any longer. Well, we appreciate your time. Thanks yeah, for watching sure. us on uh, yeah. on YouTube. Like That's really app. cool. All right. All right. Talking about the app, you can also go to our website and download our new or subscribe to our newsletter. Go to rsbnetwork.com. That's rsbnetwork.com. Sign up for our newsletter. You just put a couple of information in there. We're not going to send your stuff to China. We're not going to spam you. But what we are going to do, we're going to send you some great stories and things that are hitting the news as it happens. We have a, a great staff of writers and so if I'm in DC and I get a story and I get a lead on something I talk to our editor-in-chief Grace Saldana and she will pump out a story or either she does it or one of our other writers on what's happening right now in Washington DC so go sign up for our newsletter and also don't forget to uh, donate on that website as well rspnetwork.com slash donate for that you can do a one-time donation you can do a reoccurring donation it's all completely up to you go to our website rspnetwork.com slash donate donate and sign up for our news letter how are we doing We're reporting the truth oh thank you that's the only thing i know how to report is the truth there thank you very much where are you from uh green lake wisconsin okay. so i'll ask you the same question what is the number one issue on the ballot for you everything there's too much it's all messed up it how did we mess up a country so quick i don't know but the matador is coming trump is the matador he's gonna wipe them all out i think this election cycle i've seen more creative outfits than i did back in 2016 and 2020 uh pretty cool uh so how did we get here how did this country in every single category get worse in just three and a half years. They probably took Jesus out of their life. Okay, well, that's, we started with the Constitution, we started with removing the Bible, and then all the moral decay just well, dropped Trump's from there. going to cut all the red tape. So it's going to be half, less than half. It's going to be beautiful when it's over. Oh, You're going to be pinching yourself. We have to get everyone to the polls in November. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. we got to get done, get out and vote, beautiful though. Beautiful time to be alive. It, you know what's funny? I often say that. As much conflict as we have in the world, as much pain and sorrow and people are suffering, it's a great time to be alive because we're seeing this take place. And I think we're going to see one of the largest um, kind of a, a spiritual awakening in this country that people are realizing how much uh, evil has creeped into not only our government but our own personal lives. And it's destroyed this country. That's my, that's my hot take on that. Well, that's a good hot take. I think the eclipse... I think the eclipse is a signal of that. And we don't want to get into that a little bit later, but uh, well, thank, you for all that you thank you very much. Creative, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. How are we doing? Good, 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 good. Glad, glad to be here. Don't blame me, I voted for Trump. <laughs> all this, all this let's, see, let's see the shirt. Let me get his hat right there. <laughs> all this inflation would not happen under Trump. All the bad but stuff. This was crazy to me. This is my son, we came from the Twin Cities. We came from Minnesota, yeah. Here's my thing right here. I, I can't find anybody who voted for Biden. Where, where are the Biden stickers? Where are the people that are like, you know, where's the hope and change, you know, Obama? Right. Where, where are they? Because they should be hiding right now. After That's what, probably what, what they're doing. They're after what Biden did, they're all in hiding. <laughs> yeah, no, they're like, well, maybe That's not crazy. so much. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I tell you what, we'll, we'll talk to plenty more. I actually show that crowd behind us for a second. Uh, Denver, pop it up, man. It seems like they've really packed a lot of people in here. I want to remind everybody, go check out these guys on the screen right now. We, you like coffee? I like coffee. Hey, you like coffee? Everyone likes to drink coffee, right? Our friends over at 1775 Coffee have some of the best beans. They have some of the best coffee you can get. Very patriotic company. And you know what? They love this country. They love uh, making coffee. It's a patriot-owned business. And you know what? They want to support uh, the values that we are here for as well. That's why they're one of the sponsors of today. 1775 Coffee, the information for that is on your screen. They'll ship it to your house. Great delivery, safe and secure uh, on every level of the purchasing process. And it's something that you're going to ultimately enjoy with your family. 1775 Coffee, go check it out and uh, support a Patriot-owned company that wants to save America, just like we're trying to do uh, right now. Let me get a quick check of the time here. It's 1.19, so 
we should be about 11 minutes out from President Trump taking the stage there in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, 1.30 start here, 2.30 start there. So we should be just a few minutes out from President Trump taking the stage there. And once we do that, we will um, kick it full screen to that coverage. And that should only take about 20 to 30 minutes remarks there. And then we'll return it back here uh, in Green Bay as we wait for uh, President Trump to come. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll walk back here just a little bit more before we start to uh, wrap it up and we'll see how, kind of get an idea, how are we doing? of the uh, crowd that's out here that kind of goes around this area. Oh yeah, it goes way the heck over here. How are we doing? Good, we're fired up, right? President Trump's coming. We're gonna save America, secure the border, get it where we can afford things, you know, inflation. What's your name, where are you from? Debbie Delmarso from Green Bay. There you go. Did you guys vote today or did you pre- You oh, bet yeah. you, you how, bet you we did. How was the lines this morning? Was there lines when you went to vote? They hand you that little tag. I was 102, so I wouldn't say it was big. Yeah, not really a good wait for you then. You just walked right in. Yeah, yeah. 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 One of the things that's on there is taking like the Zuckerberg money out of public elections. You saw that on the ballot. How did you vote on that, if you don't mind me asking? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I don't think we can find anybody in Wisconsin that wants to continue that at all. Right, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Number one issue for you on the ballot this year, or I should say this, once President Trump gets into office, what's the first thing he should do? The illegals. Give them a one-way ticket back. <laughs> a massive deportation is what we're talking about. Massive. Yeah. You know who's going to head that up, in my opinion? Tom Holman. I want Tom formerly the, uh, over ICE. Should load that up, get about 3,000 of his best men start knocking on doors and start dragging them out of here. No questions asked. Start with the criminals. Start with the criminals that we know are in this country. I met with an ex-CIA guy just a couple weeks ago. There, there, we, we know exactly who's here from, you know, when, when President Trump says they're opening up their prisons, we have knowledge, we have facts that that actually is what's happening. We know who these people are. We just didn't go get them. Well, the thing is, you're going you're gonna to be fighting the Democrats in these big cities that are going to say, you can't turn them away, you can't turn them. They have to be here, they need help. No, what they need is a free handout, that's what they want. So, if they need help, you can call on me. I'll, I'll give them my phone number, I'll help them. We'll help them clean up this country. Uh, we appreciate it. Real quick, in your, in your little circle of friends, church, work, neighbors, does everyone feel the same way you do? Not everyone, Not but everyone. most of them. Every day you see me, I wear a Trump hat, no matter where. Yeah. What's your react? What's people's reaction to that? I get a lot of people that go by and say, I love that hat, I love that hat, or they'll, they're a little afraid, so they'll just give me a thumbs up. But there's some people out there that if looks could kill, I, I'd have been dead a few times. But <laughs> and, and I don't understand what they're so proud about. I was at the State of the Union speech a couple weeks ago, and they were chanting four more years of Biden. And I thought to myself, what do you want? Of, when, you're, when you're saying four more years, four more years of what? Inflation? Broken border? Foreign wars? I mean, like, what could you want in four more years? Control. Control. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was, that was the fifth time I saw President Biden in person, and I'm telling you right now, he took, what, 25 minutes to walk down the, 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 the aisle there in the, in the House chamber? It was just, he, he's, he's, he needs to go. Well, there's nothing there. I mean, and you got to quit looking at it like it's Joe, Joe Biden. It's not. It's Barack Obama. He, he's the one pulling the strings. He, he got his third term that he shouldn't be getting. And they have to quit talking like it's Joe Biden doing this stuff. It's not. And it's not Democrats, it's communists. That, that's what's running. Well, this is not the Democratic Party that maybe we, you know, grew up in at all. It's, this, is, this is the Communist Party. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, I got a pickup truck. I don't know how many get in the back end, but I'll. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's take a look at this crowd outside real quickly. Are you familiar 
Hang on, hang on just one second. I'll get you in just a second. Let's take a look at this crowd real quick. Talk about my friends over at the Birch Gold Group. You know, we talked about the economy, savings, and protecting your investments. Uh, they'll show you how to take an, a traditional IRA and turn it into a gold-backed IRA. And our friends at the Birch Gold Group can do that. They're experts in gold, silver, precious metals. And they make it really easy. And they'll send you a free information kit. All you have to do is text the word Trump to 989898 and they'll send you that free information kit make it nice and easy we've got thousands of people that have done the same thing fight the inflation fight all the the the, the instability in the markets and more importantly protect your investments text the words trump to 989898 that is the birch gold group as we wait for Grand Rapids, Michigan, any minute, President Trump taking the stage there. Until then, we'll keep it right here in Green Bay. All right, what you got for me? Are you familiar with this channel on, on Rumble? No, I'm not. I'm not. Is that your channel? No, it's not. <laughs> but it's an awesome channel, though. Well, let's show it up. We'll give, we'll, we'll give you a little promotion. Go ahead and show it up. Okay. We know Romans 828. Well, thank you for sharing that with yeah. us. Thank God bless. Thanks for coming out here. All right, let's go over here a little bit. Let's make our way. How are we doing? Well, I'm doing good. We're happy. We're happy on a Tuesday, uh, aren't we? Welcome to Wisconsin. Oh, I love Wisconsin. Yeah, well, sure you. A little do. cold for me, but you know. It's all right. I it's woke not... up this morning in shorts and I was exercising. And they said, "Wait a minute, you're in Green Bay." And I said, "Well, they told me I was going to Tampa Bay, so I put some shorts on." <laughs> it's good. To, it, it, yeah. the it's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, big day here in Wisconsin. It's, it's election day. Yes. Uh, what's your expectations on how do you think Wisconsin going to show up today? I think Wisconsin is going to come out even more so that Trump is coming into town. So I think that was part of it, and I think that it'll motivate people to say, hey, i got to go vote. Yeah. What, is, what has been some of the, the biggest things in your life that the Biden administration has done to make your life worse? Is it the economy? Is it the, the crime on the streets? I mean, is it just the, the instability of everything? All of the above. Yeah. I don't, you know, there is really not an answer to that question because it's all been bad ever since January 20th of uh, 2021. He's just made our little lives miserable, and and we want Trump back as soon as possible. Yeah. Let's take a look at these T-shirts real quick. This is great. Never surrender. This is the famous mugshot, obviously. Um, I was with President Trump in the motorcade when he went to Atlanta to have that Fulton County uh, jail mugshot um, has this has not hurt President Trump at all this is like one of the greatest promotional things you can ever do but what does it make you feel that the, the our government just keeps going after this president for some of the most ridiculous things it's just heartbreaking when you look at those three clowns that were on the stage in New York and what they've all done crime wise yet this is the one getting persecuted it's just shameful yeah. just shameful just heartbreaking yeah. I think his poll numbers continue to go up, obviously. It doesn't hurt him. No. His donations continue to go up. No, but he has to waste waste his money and time on this when he could be, yeah. you know, using it for better. Yeah, I know he'll be in court in New York for four to six weeks coming up, so it's going to take him a little bit off the campaign trail. But I've always said this, President Trump, these people are for you. You don't need to necessarily go out and do a rally every weekend. We're going to show up in November regardless if he ever does another rally until November. So uh, their rallies are great, and we love them. We love getting all together and having a good Maybe time. You independents could join us this yeah, way. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we need some independents to, to wake up and realize, crossover. yeah, yeah crossover. Do, do you think some hardcore liberals can cross over? Is it possible at this point? Are, are, are they so much on the hate Trump train that they can't see, even though the economy's crazy, we've got massive wars breaking out all over the place? They'd have to change the channel as well. Yeah. They're being brainwashed on a daily basis. Yeah. Well, that would all depend on, yeah, I guess they're starting to see exactly what's happening in their lives. I hope, I hope, I do too. hope springs eternal. Yeah, that's true. And uh, they don't have to tell anybody. Just go into the voting booth and go, Trump, right. and walk out. And they don't have to say a word. Yeah. Change their mind right then yeah. and there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming here and doing this. Wow, there's a lot of people in here. My goodness. My goodness. Even uh, on a Tuesday, but it doesn't even matter. I, I've, I've learned that. Trump events, it doesn't matter if it's on a Saturday or a Sunday, on a middle of the day, in the morning, at night, it doesn't matter. People still show up to him. We love him. Love him. He's great. <laughs> he's, he's great. great. We've he's never a seen great a man. We've and never he's, seen another political figure like this ever. And he's putting so much of his life on the line yeah. for us. Yeah. For us. He wouldn't have to do this, and he does. He, he doesn't need to do this. He often says. He said we could come out with 
with a little crummy weather, he's going through a lot more than that for us. Oh, I know. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. When you think about that, I, I got my taxes the other day, and I was like, Ugh. and I thought, you know what? He's getting hit with billion, almost a billion dollars, and I'm complaining about this. I'm like, we can, do him, this yep. we can do this. Well, we certainly, yeah, we can show our support. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. God bless all you guys. I like all the, I like all the, you know, we were saying this earlier. Everyone's, everyone's like so decorative. Everyone's got the great outfits, the great hoodies and T-shirts. We didn't know how to dress today, so we're lucky we got inside. So, yeah. but this is all right. This is great. great. Everyone is unique and different, and all we all love Trump. Packer fans, this is Packer country, right? Are we Packers, yeah. Can't, yeah, don't, don't, what's that? Till they started kneeling during the anthem. Oh, 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 really? Sensitive subject right here. <laughs> we, yeah, oh, that's true. Well, you know what's funny? Not the sports talk 101 here for a second, but did you catch the LSU uh, Iowa game last night? Yeah. Well, the LSU players were on the, went on the court for the national anthem, but the Iowa players were. Yeah. They won. They won yeah. big. Yeah. And and she was dropping darts for the three point line. Got him a yeah. win. So uh, Collins is great. All right. So uh, all right, we're gonna move along. How are we doing? Good. 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 Happy to be here. No more BS, right? Right. That's it. That's it. That's how we all feel. We we just we're tired of the BS. We're tired of the media spinning everything, not telling all of this uh, the story, just some of it. They do a lot of that. They do a lot of that. Yeah. The news isn't like what it used to be. Yeah. Did you vote already? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So polls close at eight, I believe. Okay, we'll get out of here before eight for sure. Go vote. Go vote. How far do you live from here? I live in Crivitz, so about forty minutes. Okay. So you you'll be able to get out of here in time to go do that. Yeah. Uh, family friends feel like you guys are they a lot in your circle of influence. A lot of Trump supporters. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I was I was asking people earlier, and they go, eh, not everybody. You know, it's, it's we've all got those a few liberal friends in our circle that just refuse to open up their eyes for the, for the truth. There are some that don't open their eyes, but I do believe that some probably jump ship from what we've been living. So. I think you're right. Go, Trump, go. That's kind of cool. Let's flip the camera around and see if we can show people a little, little, little outbreak of chanting. Okay, so it is 1.31 here local time. President Trump takes the stage in Grand Rapids, Michigan at 2.30. So really, in, in any moment, we'll kick this coverage over to... Uh, Michigan. We've got cameras. You've got a double box. You've got to see what it looks like uh, right there. But inside here, the convention center, uh, it, it's packed. They've got the doors open. There's a, there's still a line outside. I can't even I can't even see what it looks like outside. Have you? It's it it, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not terrible. That we're inside. They're gonna get inside. This is a big room inside. I was here earlier. It's a big room. There's a lot of seats inside. So everyone's gonna get inside for sure. Uh, but you know what's interesting? Because I've I've been in locations, I think it was South Carolina had a big room, and I walked in there, and I was like, man, there's no way they're going to fill this room up, because the people had not lined up yet. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like they said, it's like the gates opened, and people kept coming, and that room was absolutely packed, so nothing surprises me now. That's how we are. Everybody, I vote first, and then they're come and show up for the rally, for the party. So, if you live in the area, go vote, and get in the car, drive slow. We got rain, a little bit of maybe yeah. sleet, I don't know. Whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. Drive safe, get here, and come in here. You'll get right in. Yeah, oh, we're having fun today. All right, let's keep walking around here. Let's, how are we doing? How are we doing? We want to make America great again. That's, we we got to do it. This is it. I've always have said not. this is the election that if we do not straighten things out in this country and get the right policies in place, we're done. Absolutely. Absolutely. This We're is done. our last chance. Yeah. Yes. We're done. We, and people just go, oh, you're just being dramatic. No you way. A, you want to hear a good one? Yeah. I went to a, a, to a dinner the other day, Easter Sunday. This culprit said, no, he voted Democrat because he was happy with what he got. And I said to myself, how can you be happy with what you got when people turn around and stab you in the back? As far as I care, the Democratic Party can all be charged with treason, along with the President of the United States, and they ought to be hung by a rope as hard as they can hang them. 
America is angry at what's happening, and they're angry of what they've done to our veterans. They're angry of what they've done to our military overseas and deployed around the world. They're angry at the at the withdrawal of Afghanistan. They're angry. So I'm with you on the emotion. Uh, but you know what? We don't have to do some of the means you talked about. We can vote their ass out of office is what we need to do. We need to get Trump back in. We need to keep control of the House, and we need to flip the Senate. That's how we get things done. We need, absolutely, yeah. and I am working for that <laughs> very hard. There you go. Okay? Yeah. Yes. What, what is, okay, I've been asking everybody this magic question, the number one question. What, is the, what should President Trump do on day one in office? Pipeline. Oh, that's the first one I haven't heard today. What did you say? Um, A lot of people have said secure the border. It's yeah, kind of secure, absolutely. President Trump, day one, what should he do? I think he ought to get that border. Two things he needs to get that border done, overturn all, what do you call them, the president done, undone? What do you call it with the paper, executive orders? Undone. Executive orders on, oh, oh, I'll do the executive orders that Biden did, that he'd reverse the executive orders on yeah. President Trump. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get back now. Keystone Pipeline is interesting. On that, is that basically get to uh, open up a lot of the the energy resources that we have? And, we have. Uh, President yeah. Trump is right. We have more black gold under our feet than any other country in the world, and we can be energy independent. We could wipe our that debt, thirty three trillion debt out, probably in quick time. In Michigan, five hundred dollars a person to live in the apartments in Michigan. So what you're telling me is the government is paying illegals 500 and something dollars a month to live in this state. So they're, the government's pay, or the state is essentially paying. Credit cards, they're putting them up in other people's homes. It's ridiculous. Throwing veterans out of their places to fill them up with Why illegals. Oh, it's, we need to take, what's that? Go to the polls in November. Let's all reverse it. That's yes. what we do. That's what we thank you. Can I get on, could I give you my short list for VP? Okay, let's do that. We haven't talked about this yet. Now, I've got uh, I've got my my list in my head, what I would like, but I want to hear yours. I'd like Don Jr. Okay, he would be great, but it's not going to happen. But go I ahead. Uh, no, 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 no. I, lo no, I love it. I love it. I'm with you on that, by the way. I'm 100%. Then Tucker. We'd be great. Oh, 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 that's a new name I haven't heard. Okay. And possibly General Flynn. That's like that's a heck of a list, because John Don Jr. just said to Trump for twelve years. A Trump. <laughs> you have a Trump for twelve. Yeah, you do that. You can help out in the basement, right? Why not? Just like Obama's back and doing his thing. Uh, Jr. said the other day that the VP has to be tough fighter, and the ability to take bullets. I mean, to go out there and just hit it. Not. We don't need a pence. We don't need another pence. You can. We don't need that. Uh, can you get that to Donald? Yeah, let me go ahead and tell him. <laughs> There's your shorts Lindell list. I need. Tell him. Oh, Mike Lindell. Tell him to tell him. Well, hey, would Lindell make a great VP? <laughs> I love like him for other things. Yeah, I know. You're right. You're right. But yeah. Um, we were going to talk. Something else. He can do something else. It's a great list. It's a great list. Thank you. Oh, great list. All right. Wait. Uh, did you vote already? Yeah, this oh, morning. Just, okay. Great. How was the lines there? They were just starting. We were there early. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad you made it in there. Yeah. Good crowd here. Did this surprise you on a Tuesday? No, no not at all. No. Not at all. We're angry. I was just talking to a gentleman over there, and he's a little emotional, and he's just angry about what's going on in our country. Oh, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. We have to. This is our last chance. This I really it. feel. No, no, yeah. this is it. I, I feel like if we, if another four years of these policies go in place, we flood the, the cities with more criminals, which crime goes up. Uh, inflation continues to grow up, uh, interest rates grow up, nobody's going to buy anything. Uh, we were talking to a couple young people over there. I, I think the American dream of buying a home now and getting out of college and getting that job and buying a house and that, I, I don't know how you do it. Absolutely. It's, it's got to change. It's got to change. It's got to, we got to. We do it. No, we got to just go vote. We just got to flood the polls. Get my short list out there, will you? I'll get the short list out there. So if we had to rank them, let's rank them. Is it, was it Junior, Tucker, and then um, Flynn? I would love to see Junior for a dynasty, okay. but then okay. Tucker, uh, Nunes, Flynn. Nunes. Okay. All right. 
I like that. I'll, I'll take that. Because I've seen, look, yeah, let's call some names out. I've seen people like Tulsi Gabbard be on the list, and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Why is Tulsi Gabbard on a vice president list? I've seen her voting record. It's the most liberal voting record. She's a liberal. She doesn't need to be on a second in command to anything. Not even Dunkin' Donuts at this point. I don't, I don't want her on anywhere near this administration. Don't want her anywhere near it. Right. And I, um, Nothing against her. She, she's probably a nice person. Probably be anybody on his short list that's out there. Ooh, I'm gonna whisper in your ear. I'm gonna whisper somebody. I'm gonna whisper somebody in your ear. And I don't you. I don't want you to repeat it on the air. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll keep her secret. She's like, all right. We having fun? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Having, a having a blast. By the way, having a blast. Awesome. Like the real f news. Yeah. 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 Thanks for coming. Yeah. We're, we're glad to be here. This is what I mean. I wouldn't miss this for anything. I'm just glad that that we're, we've got the support in Wisconsin because we need Wisconsin. We need it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we got to we got to flip it back to Rod. We have to. Um, you've got. I mean, you had some voting issues back in 2020 here. I'm hoping that, <laughs> a couple, right? I'm hoping that can we can we what can we do to to kind of have we done anything to. to Day to make sure some things change. Yes. Uh, the no private Monday. And, and yes. Yes. It's going to pass. When you think? Yeah, I would certainly hope so. Yeah. I mean, we don't need Zucker. Anything to work, it has to be done legally. Legally. Yeah. Uh, no, top issue for you as a voter. Top issue. I would say the border security. Yep. What's top issue for you? Crime. That's the first we have. I fled Illinois and moved to Wisconsin after 2020. So my vote doesn't count in Illinois. Chicago machine runs it. So I live here now. What's the crime like in Illinois? Horrible. Horrible. Is it driven by, like, street gangs, like, like illegal immigrants, like the, 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 the gangs that are coming up from the southern border, or is it just inner city crime that's not being prosecuted? All of the above, but the bigger problem is that it's catch and release. It's a cashless bail system now. You can go shoot someone, just like a guy shot someone in uh, Rockford a couple weeks ago, Rockford, Illinois, and was released. Can't be held, a murderer, let go. That is, that is uh, something that I, I don't think any of us can understand that we're letting criminals just get away with whatever they want to do. Yeah, uh, my son lives in L.A., and I know that um, Gaston is the district attorney for L.A., and he was the worst, just letting all, I mean, individuals loot, rob stores, they, and if they do catch them, they just kind of say, just don't do it again. Just, just don't do that again. Uh, we have to have consequences to stuff or we don't change. Amen. Yeah, we're having a good time out here. <laughs> we're having a good time out here. Hey, you're starting to snow, too, a little bit, so that's great. I do, I do feel really bad. Denver, let's see if we can get a shot outside. You see, it's starting to snow here in Green Bay. No, no surprise there to people who live here. Uh, but, you know, you've got a line of people out there uh, in the snow standing up to get inside. And uh, once the doors open here, we'll all be inside. Uh, looking at right now, thank you, uh, five minutes out. So I got the five-minute warning. So President Trump should be coming on stage in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in about two minutes, just to let you guys know back in the court in the studio. So President Trump's going to be uh, there in Grand Rapids, and as soon as he has a, about a 15-minute speech, uh, give or take, walk on, walk off, you'll see him here uh, on time. I've been told President Trump will be on time here, so which is great. So all these people have plenty of time. Yes, we don't want him to. Yes, we want to be on time. That's a good. Yeah, I, that's right. And how about a man that knows how to walk off a stage, right? Not fall, not trap. <laughs> we love Trump. Yeah, and he doesn't sit there and slur his word. The other day he had a press conference, and I don't think I understand. He might as well talk, speak Japanese. I didn't understand a single thing he said. Oh, when they were on stage, all three of them? They were just like the slurring words and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was an interesting yeah. moment to watch that. Yeah. Did you vote today? Did you go out I there and vote? I did. Got up, went there before I did anything else. 
What was the was there a line at the at the voting center? I live in a very small town, and no, and they had it wrapped up in a bow. You were in, you were out. They were making sure every vote went in the machine and out. Very nice setup this year. I was really impressed. Glad yeah. you made it. Love your shirt. Thank you. If we can, if we can uh, make Jesus Christ run and <laughs> come down here and run for president, we will. But he's our Lord and Savior, though. Amen. Amen. He is my that. Lord and Savior. Yeah. Issues for you. Uh, for, for the for this election top issue um well one of the top issues is the immigration issue which if we take care of immigration we'll take care of a lot of the drug problems and the crime problems that seems to be a core problem and i like the way donald trump has the economy going and how he stands up for life and for israel there you go I the same thing, so. yeah it is it's oh well you know, if you take care of the immigration problem, and then, um, you know, once you do that, then if you can get ICE to go in and uh, clean the nation of, of all those that aren't supposed to be here, a lot of that crime and that and those things will that will go all well with it. The crime will go. The crime will drop. You get them out. Yeah, well, yeah. The, uh, the uh, crime that the uh, migrant crime and that will uh, drop. You just got to get tougher DAs and let the police do what the do what the uh, police do, uh, and then to have uh, judges and DAs who aren't going to say, "Oh, that's okay," and then they go out and they get 21 prior arrests, and then they go. And on a traffic stop, kill that one in a, in a New York City that's only been on a 32-year-old that's only been on the force for three years. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. We got we to gotta make sure these criminals are off our streets right. and behind the bars on that. All right, we're almost done. You guys having a good time? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing going well. We're live on the air. Just look, did they get the doors open yet? Maybe I don't know. I think they're uh, getting close. Anyway, we're glad you're joining us. Uh, we can also, don't forget to uh, go subscribe, to all, go across the board on social medias. Make sure you go to Twitter. Make sure you go to Instagram, Facebook. You can follow me as well at Brian Glenn TV, at Brian on True Social. Or, and you can also uh, make sure you follow Right Side on True Social as well. Uh, great platform to get all of the uh, information out as we kind of go into this uh, election season and as we make our way through april and, I, and i'm anticipating perhaps um, a little more activity on the legal side uh that i could uh, you know we'll make sure we'll be able to show you there look at the line let's see if we get the line see if we can uh denver see if you get a nice tight shot up on the uh you can walk on up there if it makes you better to battle the thing but yeah it's definitely uh going down the street now by by the looks of the 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 venue inside now it is a massive venue there is a lot of seats um, so hopefully all of these people once they're processed through their magnetometers they'll be able to get in but that's kind of a good look at the crowd uh, there outside the convention center number one issue for you this election season is what well I work in the paper industry so the climate stuff that they're trying to push right now is not very good it's not good for our industry can't run a paper mill off of uh, solar panels. You might, be the, <laughs> you might be the first person I've ever talked to that's in, that works in the paper industry. Uh, so, have you? What have you seen under the so far under the Biden administration? The, the policies. How, how has that affected? Is, is, is it the climate initiative deals or? Well, I know the EPA just came out with uh, some air regulations that are hurting our industry, and I know they're trying to reverse them right now too. So, it really hurts. It hurts our industry as far as us making improvements to our mills and yeah. stuff like that. So, what's the what's the number one product you guys make on the paper, on the paper side? Is it um, a particular product? Or? We're specialty papers. Okay. We make okay. Stuff, yeah. so. I just know that when I was in Texas, Temple Inland back in the day was the big uh, paper mill back okay, in that yeah. area. So yep. I think they made like paper cups and things like that. Oh, we're right here. How are we doing? Wow! Look at all these people. We're gonna make through here. Thanks for uh, coming out. How are we doing? How are we doing? We doing all right? Nice. Look, I like your shirt. I like that. I like that. Look at this line. My goodness. It just goes down the street. We'll get in the middle of here. How are we doing today? What's what the Packers going to do this year? Packers? Yeah. Super Bowl. Oh, wow. Okay. Earlier I had somebody. So between if, if Trump 
was also the head coach of the Packers. That might be a big thing, too. He could get to make the right place. Oh, yeah. It might take him a little while, but he'd make it. Yeah. All right, we're going to stand by he's right now. He's be busy enough after Ooh. what Biden. Does. He's got a list of things to do, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah he does. Uh, we're going to stand by in Grand Rapids, Michigan. President Trump is about to take the stage there, I'm hearing. So we'll be stand by there. And as soon as he comes on stage, you will see them bail out of coverage here and go straight full screen there from, uh, from Michigan. He's going to talk about immigration. Uh, he's going to address the, the crisis at the southern border and what some of the policies under the Biden administration has affected Americans, not only through the crime, but the drug fentanyl and some of the uh, open border issues. So we'll, we'll get to that here in just a second. Another Packers fan, I would imagine. I, I should have worn my jacket, you know. Uh, on day one, what should President Trump do on day one? Let's see. Lower taxes. Seal the border. Seal the border. That seems to be the number one thing right now is seal the border. Uh, what... It, under the Biden administration, what has been the greatest impact in your life? I mean, cost of living, uh, expenses, I don't know, crime. Maybe you had to be unfortunate. Yeah, prices in the border. Letting all the illegals in. Yeah. Block the border. Yeah, block the border. Yep. People say we're going to see one of the largest mass deportations in U.S. history whenever he gets in. And I hope so. It needs to go. They need to go back where they belong. They broke federal law. Come in like everybody else yeah. had to. To a lot of people that are that that came in here legally, and they're kind of angry that the uh, they went through the right process, spent the money, spent the attorney fees to do it, took the time to do it. All right, so hang, hang on just one second. Repeat that. All right, we're gonna throw it to uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. President Trump just take the stage there. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. The weather was a little rough, but there was no way I was going to miss it. And I uh, see we have a lot of media here. That's nice. Always nice. There are deep friends, right? <laughs> but we're getting better over the years, much better. But I do want to uh, say hello to everybody. This is a special place to me, and we're going to have a big victory. The polls are looking tremendous in Michigan and Wisconsin. And uh, we are we're going to do something, I think, that's very very special. I think it's going to be a very special election. I've been saying November 5th of this year is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. I believe that. So just remember that. We're here this afternoon in Grand Rapids, Michigan, 1,283 miles from the southern border. You've been hearing a lot about the southern border over the last couple of years. We put up a chart which is uh, border-related, and you see the lowest point in history it was just before I left. Just as I was leaving, that was the lowest point. You see the arrows pointing? And I think that chart spells out better than anything I can say today. In fact, I don't have to say anything. I can just leave. Just take a look at that. That is the, uh, that is the, the best. And then it looks like a rocket ship went off. Uh, when you look at the other numbers, it's a shame. It's a sad shame. Under crooked Joe Biden, every state is now a border state. Every town is now a border town because Joe Biden has brought the carnage and chaos and killing from all over the world and dumped it straight into our backyards. And people are coming in from prisons and mental institutions, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. Under the Trump administration, we had a tough policy of getting the bad people out. We wanted to get them out. We took them out by the thousands, and we took, uh, as an example, the MS-13 gangs out. Uh, the countries didn't want to let them back in. And I said, well, then we're not giving you any money. We give them so much money, in this case, $793 million. I said, that's okay. We're not going to give you any money. And they said, well, we'd be glad to have MS-13 coming back into our country. It'd be an honor. And uh, they took them back, but they wouldn't take them back under Obama. Under the Obama administration with Biden, they wouldn't take them back. And I was told that they won't take them back. And I said, really, what do we give them? And it was close to $800 million. I said, tell them we're not giving it to them anymore. And they immediately said, let's take them back. That was about, that lasted, that negotiation. Sheriffs lasted about three minutes and we succeeded. That was an easy one. Now under Biden, the bad ones are coming in at a level that nobody ever thought was even possible. Nobody thought this was possible in Venezuela. The crime is down 67 percent from what it was a year and a half ago because they're taking all of their gangs and all of their criminals and they're depositing them 
into the United States of America. Venezuela, think of it, their crime. Wouldn't we love to have a statistic where crime is down 67 percent? Ours is only going in one direction, and it's going to be very bad now because we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. They're having fistfights with our police officers right in the middle of streets. They're sending prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, and terrorists, the worst they have in every country all over the world. This isn't just in South America. They're coming from the Congo, from Yemen, from Somalia, from Syria. They come from all over the world, China. They're Many of them are military age, which is a very strange. You don't see very many women coming in, and you see a lot of them coming in they're about 19 to 25, 26 years old, and especially from China. We have 29,000 over the last few months, 29,000 from China, and they all seem to be uh, perfectly fit for military service, ready for military service. It's crazy. This is country changing, it's country threatening, and it's country wrecking. They have wrecked our country. But I stand before you today to declare that Joe Biden's border bloodbath, and that's what it is. It's a bloodbath. They tried to use that term incorrectly on me two weeks ago. You know, it's all about misinformation. That's all they do is cheat on elections and disinformation, misinformation, fairly closely related, those two words. But they basically mean that uh, it's all talk. But it's a border bloodbath, and it's destroying our country. It's a very bad thing happening. It's uh, going to end on the day that I take office, which will be January 20th. It'll end. And thank you. I want to thank members of Congress. A lot of great congressmen are here, warriors, really. They've fought with me for a long time. John James, John Molinar, and Jack Bergman. They're great friends of mine, and they've, uh, they love your state. They love your state. I want to really thank and congratulate, because this guy has gone like a rocket ship. I've never seen it. Well, I have a couple of times. We've got a lot of people elected. Those endorsements are pretty good. But, you know, you still have to endorse the right person. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And uh, your next U.S. Senator, Mike Rogers, who's going to be fantastic, wherever Mike is. Wherever Mike is. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, he was a great congressman. He was a tough guy, too. He had one little... Uh, Sabbatical, we went to CNN for a little while, and it's okay, you know, they say kind of it. But, but other than that, uh, he's been great. Well, that's good, because now you'll get a few of the more moderate people who are being nice, but he's a, he's a very respected person. Uh, he's the one we wanted. He's the one that decided to do it, and he's going to be a fantastic, I think he's going to be a fantastic U.S. Senator, always respected at the highest level. And uh, it was always fair to us, too. When he was on, when he did his television thing, he was always fair, strong, fair. Uh, I also want to thank Michigan Senate Republican leader Eric Nesbitt. Where is Eric? I think you're around here someplace, Eric. Good. Great job you're doing, Eric. Michigan House Republican leader Matt Hall. Matt. Good. They stand right in the middle, those guys. Former Detroit police chief James Craig. Good guy, too. Good guy. Good guy. Knows his way around and has done a great job. Thank you very much. We have great support. I think he just supported uh, Mike, actually, didn't he? Did, yes. he? Did I hear that? That's, that's, a big, that's a big endorsement. That's a great endorsement. Thank you, James. The second best. Yeah. Well, thank you. Actually, Mike went up 61 points. Can you imagine that? He went up 61 points. And that's, uh, that's really... Uh, that's quite a raise. He went up in one night, and he's, uh, I think that primary is over. I think he's focused now on the Democrat, and the Democrat's a radical left lunatic and uh, doesn't represent what Michigan stands for, I can tell you. doesn't represent the auto workers, and wants to do the all-electric cars all over the place that are all going to be made in China, and uh, very bad. So I think, I think that Mike Rogers is going to have tremendous success against her. Former Michigan Attorney General Bill Schutte, and uh, thank you, Bill, very much. Thank you. And many other distinguished guests. We've got a lot of people here, some ex-congressmen, some congressmen. I'm not going to go into it because we want to get down to business. We want to just uh, get our country going again. We want to get the border closed, or we want to have people come into our country but come in legally, right? Legally. <laughs> Moments ago, I met with an incredible group of local law enforcement leaders to discuss how Michigan 
communities are being ravaged by a new form of crime, and that's the migrant crime that we name it. It should be called Biden migrant crime, but that's too long. But you'll always remember it was Biden that gave it to us. Eleven days ago, right here in Kent County, a 25-year-old Michigan woman named Ruby Garcia, who's become a very well-known name, beautiful young woman, was savagely murdered by an illegal alien criminal. Under the Trump administration, this monster had been deported, thrown out of the country, wasn't going to be able to come back, because you just have to look at the charts. It was very, very hard to get in. But he came back, and uh, we threw him out of the country, and crooked Joe Biden took him back and let him back in and let him stay in, and he, he viciously killed Ruby. The illegal alien charged with Ruby's really heinous killing and he, this is somebody that had many, many arrests, including for uh, some very bad crimes that he committed. And he was set loose to roam our streets, and in this case, uh, set loose to roam in Michigan by politicians that are left and weak and stupid. On March 22nd, he shot 17-year-old Ruby. Actually, she was uh, a beautiful, beautiful young woman. Uh, Ruby Garcia was uh, shot multiple times with an illegally obtained handgun. Her body was dumped on the side of a highway, left to die, actually. Had a little life left, left to die. And uh, Ruby passed away, and it's been a big story because it's so horrible. Some of these horrible stories, there's so many of them, you could go on for days, but some of them just... Uh, they resonate so much more for whatever reason. They're all so horrible, and there's so many of them. Now Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter, and when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. Two months ago, another illegal alien criminal was sentenced in Kent County by executing a 22-year-old Grand Rapids woman while she was in the car with her one-year-old baby, shooting her at least five times all over with a rifle at point-blank range while the killer was wanted for outstanding attempted versions of various forms of strangulation. They were looking for this particular killer all over the country. Uh, he was allowed to come into our country by a very weak border policy. And just a few weeks ago, I met with the grieving family of Lakin Riley. You know Lakin. She's, uh, she was incredible. Top of her class. Everything was the top. She was the top of everything. She was incredible. I met the parents. Incredible people. The 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia who was barbarically murdered by an illegal alien animal. Uh, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. Nancy Pelosi told me that. She said, please don't use the word animal, sir, when you're talking about these people. I said, I'll use the word animal, because that's what they are. I'll never forget my vow to her. Wonderful mother, father, and sister, two weeks ago. And uh, I said, I will deliver justice for Lakin. I said that. And now, today, I'm adding something. It's going to be for Lakin. And it's also justice for Ruby. We're going to deliver justice for Ruby. We're going to watch what happens with this thug. We're going to watch what happens. And we have all the law enforcement behind. They're going to be watching what happens to this thug. He's not going to get away with it. So many people get away with it. They say, oh, let him go, let him go. I'm the only one that has to put up a bond. You know, I put up a bond. I didn't do anything wrong. I had to put up a bond this morning for $175 million. I did nothing wrong. They can shoot somebody, kill somebody, and walk out of jail an hour later. How about that? Do you think that's a fair policy? That's, that's called radical left. But not one more innocent life should be lost to Biden migrant crime. The first step to restoring safety in America is to fire crooked Joe Biden. Get him out November 5th, and we're going to get him out. We're going to... We're going to have we're going to have more people voting, I think, than anybody can even imagine. And if uh, that happens, if we swamp them, if we swamp them, you know, swamps too. First, you want to drain the swamp, but you want to, for purposes of voting, you want to swamp them. And we're going to swamp them, and uh, they won't be able to cheat. 
because they're very good at that. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history, and you see that up there. We ended catch and release. We built 571 miles of border wall very successfully. We're all ready to add another 200. That's far more than I said I was going to build, but it worked so well. We got Mexico to send 28,000 soldiers for those people to say, Mexico, oh, they didn't give the wall. They didn't give the wall. They gave more. They gave us 28,000 soldiers for years. That's why my numbers were so good. 28,000 soldiers. I said, you have to give them. They said, uh, we wouldn't do that. Why would we do that? By the way, did you see Mexico's now asking for $20 billion a year to a year to even sit down and talk to these people? They wouldn't ask me for that. $20 billion a year. Have you seen that? I don't know, Mike Rogers. I think we're going to have to stop that. But $20 billion a year they want just to sit down and talk, think of it. How crazy is it all? Where have we come? But they said, uh, no, 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 we won't give you soldiers. Why would we do that? Oh, he said, yes, you will. Oh, you're going to give me the soldiers. No, 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 we will not do that. Of course, you know, that's what you'd say. That's what I'd say. You will do it 100%. I will do anything you ask, including I will make a really major bet. You will do it. The 28,000, nope, we won't do it. I said, here's the story. If you don't have this approved, it was Friday evening, immediately I'm going to sign a bill where we're going to tariff your cars and all of the other things you send in to hurt Michigan and to hurt other people. But regardless of that, because the new threat is China is now building factories. Not with me, they weren't. In Mexico, they're going to build cars in Mexico and sell them. And they think they're going to sell them over our border with no tax. Okay? Not going to happen with me. With Biden, it's going to happen. And Michigan and the United Auto Workers will be totally out of business. They're the biggest, they're the biggest car plants anywhere in the world. And they're building them in Mexico. A friend of mine builds plants. That's all he can do. He can't walk across the street, but he's the greatest builder of car plants. If you ask this guy, uh, who won the game last night? I don't know. Who I couldn't care less. All he can do is build plants. He's unbelievable. I said, I want to take a look at some of the plants. He said, okay, well, are you ready to go to Mexico? So that was bad enough. Then he said, because China is building the largest plants anywhere in Mexico, right along the border, and they're going to make cars. They're not doing it with me. With me, they're going to be tariffed to a level that those cars will not happen. They can't do this to us. They've already done. And whoever heads the, the auto workers, United Auto Workers, should be ashamed of himself, approving the electric vehicles, all electric. It's the craziest thing. They don't go far. I was just telling the People in the back, I was going to use folks, but I don't like using the word because Biden uses it in every single speech. Hello, folks. You know, it's like a nervous habit with him. Hello, folks. Thank you, folks, 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 hundreds of times. So I just sort of put that out of so. But I was telling the people behind me, it would have been a nice time to use that term, too. But I said that, uh, you know, when you look at all of the horrible decisions that have been made, but this decision with the electric vehicle, I mean, outside of allowing prisoners and uh, mental institution people and terrorists into our country with no checks, no nothing, no, no checks, no nothing, by the millions and millions, the electric vehicle one is one of the dumbest I've ever heard, too. Because I was in a beautiful place called Iowa, and we had the Iowa primary, which I won by the highest number in history, by the way, which we were happy about that. By double the highest, actually. We had double the, the highest, the best margin doubled. Anyway, so I love it. But it happened to be a little cold that night. It was 40 degrees below zero. And there were more electric cars. I said, what are all those cars doing all over the streets? They're electric cars, sir. They don't work in the cold. So they're going to have to do a little business first. And I want them people to buy an electric car if you want one. But I want them to be able to buy every other form of transportation, every other, f I want you to use gasoline a lot because we have more gasoline than any country anywhere in the world. So we're playing into China because they're gonna make all the, that's what they have, they have that, we have gas, we have gasoline, we have oil and gas, we have gasoline. And I said, isn't it a shame? We play away from our strength and we play right into their strength by doing this. And the first day, I promise you, I will sign with the electric, vehicle mandate is gone. If you want an electric car, you can buy it, but you're going to be able to buy every other form of, of push, every other form of car and engine and motor 
that you want, and you're going to have it, and the car companies are going to have to go back. You know, I don't know if you know it, the reason the car companies, the massive subsidy that this country is paying to try and get these cars sold. We have hundreds of thousands of cars, electric. They can't sell them. People don't want them. And you got to go with the market. We've sold about 5% of our, our cars are electric, and that's fine. I think they're fine if you'd like to go short distances. If you want to take a trip, I don't think you want to do that. I'm, I don't recommend electric. Maybe someday they'll be able to do it, but right now they're not even close. So we're going to end that immediately. We're going to end it day one. But we had remain in Mexico. Think of this. We had the 28,000 soldiers. And when I said, I want them now, we had them the following week. We had the, that's why our numbers are so good. But we have remain in Mexico, safe third country agreements, asylum bans, Title 42, when people were sick, we don't want them coming into our country with contagious diseases, and they have it. And all of a sudden, you see these contagious diseases spreading, and everyone's saying, I wonder where they came from. I can tell you where they came from. And we had what's called a rapid removal policy, very rapid removal, like how about the following day and even that evening. And all of that's been ended by crooked Joe Biden. It's just so sad. And that's why you see the numbers on the chart where they look like the rocket ship. Joe Biden and his party came in and they blew it all up. Everything was all the things we did in so many other ways, too, with trade. So many things we took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China and they're soft on China. They're soft on everybody, everybody but me. They're very tough on me. They are soft on everybody, but they're tough on me. But that's OK. It's going to all work out very nicely because the people of this country understand it. You can't interfere with elections like they do. And it's the only thing he's got going, if you think about it. The border policies are horrible. All of his policies are hor horrible. You look at inflation, inflation's through the roof. No matter what money people are making, the inflation is better. Unless you quadrupled your salary, uh, the inflation is just destroying people in this country, where bacon is up three and four times, where the food prices are so bad, the energy prices. And by the way, energy is going up again, in case you haven't noticed. Fentanyl and opioid deaths in your state are up 32 percent, and deadly drugs pour across the border at levels that nobody's ever seen before, steering thousands and thousands of uh, this tremendous, these vats of poison right into Michigan lives. And once peaceful, suburban Michigan is really now, you're under an invasion, and there's no way you can vote for this guy. I mean, look, I don't want to be uh, too casual about it. There's no way you can vote for this guy. You see what I see, and there's just no way. If he makes it to the starting gate, which I, for, I, I find it hard to believe, but if he does, there's just no way. Uh, we have to get law and order back. These are the best people in the world. They will know, the sheriff's behind me, and in, this is in all states. Somebody said, how will you get these criminals out? I say, the sheriffs, the police, the police officers, the police, the law enforcement, in their local communities, their local, they know every bad kid. They know every bad person. They know their first name, their middle name. They know their phone numbers. They have their cell phones. They have everything about them. They know exactly what to do and how to do it. These guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But we have to let them do their job. And we're going to work out a federal immunity for police so they're allowed to do their job without losing their house and their pension <laughs> and everything else when the when the liberal governors and mayors don't back them. In Troy, Michigan, a band of illegal alien thieves recently went on a rampage at a local mall, breaking into the diamond store, smashing the display cases with hammers, attacking the employees, and making off with armloads of jewelry. You read about that, a lot of jewelry. Oakland County organized squads of illegal alien gang members are helping, and they're hiding all over, and breaking into rural communities. They're hiding in bushes, actually, they say. They hide in bushes, and then they break into a house when the people leave, and sometimes when the people are there, which is probably worse, but into the rural communities, suburban communities. And, you know, the suburban housewives actually like Donald Trump. You know why? Because I'm the one that's going to keep them safe. They, they like to say, well, the suburban housewives, I don't know. I think I do great with the suburban housewives because they want to remain safe. <laughs> But they loot the jewelry, they take their purses, electronics, watches, all of their cash, and the people come back and they say, what happened? If you don't want illegal alien criminals crawling through your windows and ransacking your drawers, then you must vote for 
the fact that we have to throw crooked Joe Biden out as fast as possible, the damage he can do, and, t and we're talking about a certain type of damage, and even bigger damage could be World War III, because this guy has no clue. He can't put two sentences together. And he's dealing with Putin, and he's dealing with President Xi, and he's dealing with Kim Jong-un, all people I know very well. We were under no threat from anybody until this guy got in office. Now they're talking nuclear all the time. We didn't talk nuclear. I rebuilt our nuclear power to a level that nobody has, but you don't mention it, and you don't talk about it. But now Putin's talking about it. And now Kim Jong-un again is talking about it. You had four safe years. You were safe because they respected your president and they respected the United States of America. And now you're not safe, I will tell you. We could end up in World War III with this lunatic. In various counties recently, three illegal alien migrants were arrested for soliciting sex from children, yet the radical left-wing governor Gretchen Whitmer, a real beauty she is. I had to deal with her in COVID. She was our, the only one that was able to go sailing was her husband, right? Her husband went sailing, and everybody else is locked in their house. Uh, how did that work out? Not too good. But it's, she's now pushing Michigan families to accept $500 a month to take illegal aliens into your homes. They, want, they don't say this for our veterans that are on the street. They don't say this for other people, but they say it for migrants coming in because they want them to vote, probably. In other words, Biden and Whitmer are stealing your money to give free housing to illegals and then asking you to quarter these people, put them in your homes and feed them and do everything else. And it's just the whole thing is so, is so crazy. And she's a terrible governor, by the way. Your streets are bad. Your everything's bad. She, come, she used to come to the White House. She was so nice. And then she'd go say, I don't like that man. I say, wait a minute. I was very nice, wasn't I? But when I'm president, instead of asking you to cram illegal aliens into your homes, I'll tell you that the illegal alien trespassers, they must go back to their homes. They have to go back because no country, no country can withstand this invasion. There isn't a country in the world that can, I don't care how much money, and we don't, we owe $34 trillion. There's no country in the world that who withstand the, the cost of this, and maybe more important than actual dollar cost, the, the cost that it's doing, it's wrecking our civilization. It's destroying our country. On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. And if other countries say they won't take them back, we're not going to take them back. I will say that, uh, yeah, here they come. You're just going to hold on, hold on to your britches because here they come. They're coming back. Congratulations. And if you don't think these countries send them, and they send the people, by the way, that they want out. They're not sending their finest. They're sending people that they want. That's why they come out of jails and prisons. That's why they come out of the mental institutions and insane asylums. Uh, human trafficking now is that we, mostly women is at the highest level. We had it went to the lowest level in 37 years. I had it down to the lowest level in 37 years, and now it's at the highest level ever. And this is human trafficking, mostly in women. We will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of our American suburbs, cities, and towns. We will end deadly sanctuary cities immediately. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement, and we will impose a naval blockade on the cartels, and we will hit the cartels very hard, but we're going to impose a naval blockade because when the la land gets clogged, you know, these are rather smart people. They go this way with the boats. They have some pretty good boats, too. I tell you, they have a lot of money. They have unlimited money. The money they've made, they've made more money than the corporations that you read about on the covers of the magazines don't make the kind of money these cartels are making. Now I'd like to invite some of the heroes, really, law enforcement professionals here to speak, say, for just a few minutes, the Biden border bloodbath. They want to talk about it, and we will talk about it. Our country is in trouble. We're a nation in decline. We're not going to let it happen. We've got to stop it. We've got to win on November 5th. And it's all going to stop, and it's going to stop very quickly. Thank you very much. If I could, I'll ask Police Officers Association of Michigan, President James Tiganelli, to come up. He's a fantastic man, respected all over the country. Thank you. James, please. What an honor to be here, and with all these leaders of law enforcement and Congress uh, but with you here, Thank you. waiting for the next trip up to uh, D.C. with you. The, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about 
about recruiting, retention, and what the life of the police are like right now that we know that you were going to fix for us because you did the last time just because of how you feel about us. 45 years ago, 45, yeah. number sounds to me, right? <laughs> 45 years ago, uh, when I hired on at the job, 2,000 people would apply for 200 positions. Right. It, because this job of sh deputy sheriff and police officer was a very honorable job. The guy down the street, you all knew where they lived. You all looked for them for leadership. And nowadays, and let's say the last 10 years, we can't get enough people to fill the vacancies. The academies are empty. Nobody's coming along. And we can't get enough candidates. So why does that happen? It's, it's not because there's no desire. It's because of recruiting. Right. And recruiting, to me, was always the... Uh, uh, Grandpa, Uncle Joe, who was a police officer, maybe it was the baseball coach that was a cop during the week. He was the guy that you respected. I didn't come from a law enforcement family, but I came up as a law enforcement officer because they were important to me. On the east side of Detroit, you needed to have a few friends in a PD. The uh, 48205, this is now the most violent zip code in America, I believe. That's where I was at. But there's no way we can have a president of the United States that allows three million people a year or more, I'm sure, to come across the, uh, to come out of our country illegally. We can't allow that to continue. It's, uh, those who enter, they do so in the light of day. They do it by pushing aside our National Guard. Then they're handed a, a, a gift card, they're handed a telephone or an iPad, transportation to anywhere in the U.S. that they want to go. And then you want to tell these law-abiding people that are here, uh, you have to obey the law. There seems like there's no real reason to do that anymore. And that's made it very hard to be policing because people look to us, the, the law-abiding people look to us, but they're saying, what about that person? What about that? You've, as you've talked about here today, it, my mom used to say it takes the wind out of your sails. You just kind of, everything calms down and it's not so good. The felons that we arrest become misdemeanors and then they become no bond and then they become free guys really before we get our car cleaned out at the end of the shift. Why would you expect people to obey the law when millions are rewarded for disobeying it? I don't know how many officers must get injured or killed or, or worse, the, the, the civilians out there that are injured or assaulted or killed and, and assaulted. We've heard about a couple of them here tonight. I know that we can fill these vacant jobs with good people. I know they're out there. I know we can recruit them, but we need a commander in chief that will give them just simple due process. You've talked about some of the things that are important to us. But they just, need, they just need to know they've got somebody behind them a little bit instead of trying to push them backwards, pushing them forward. I think that'll help to restore the honor to this job that, that was once such an honorable one. I can promise you that our guys will put that suit on and go out and do the job for you. They really will. And they'll be better for all of the people in this room when that happens. We always were what stood between law-abiding citizens and chaos. You hear about it all night. You've talked about it here today. Uh, Instead of those efforts to make the United States look weak and, and uh, poor and uh, average, we need you, we need you to make America look great again. And, uh, and I, know you, I know you have that. I know it's there. Uh, last week when you went to New York and you attended the viewing of Jonathan Doerr, uh, I just wanted you to know that that brought honor to every police officer, every deputy sheriff, every law enforcement officer. <laughs> Wherever we were in this country, when we saw what you did, it was like, that's cool. That's us. That's, that's a boost for all of us. It was so, it's so good. Uh, I hope that you'll consider with the Congress and the Senate here that we have that uh, you'll support legislation to make a, 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 a death penalty for killing a police officer while on duty. And I'll leave you with this. Uh, we supported you, we endorsed you in 2016. We were the first guys in Michigan. And you, you sent me a little video and we still have it. it was, uh, we were proud to, proud to do it. We were there in 2020. And I'll tell you, we're here in 2024. And today on behalf of 12,000 law enforcement people that the Police Officers Association of Michigan represent, we want you to accept our endorsement for President of the United States. Very important. We got it. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much. That's very nice. That's a great honor, and thank you very much. And uh, we, will, we will make you proud.
We will make you proud. I do want to thank uh, the family of because I met with Stephanie. That's Jonathan's beautiful wife, Jonathan Diller, and. Uh, I met with the whole family. These are incredible people. What happened to Jonathan should never have happened. And uh, they were just uh, devastated. But the spirit and the love and the numbers of police that were there, and fire, the firemen, firewomen, uh, the number of people that were there was incredible. It just was incredible. But that's an incredible family. So we send our love. Uh, I said to Stephanie, he will not have died in vain. So, but I thank you very much for the endorsement. Thank you. So, uh, if I might, we're going to do this very quickly. Uh, Sheriff Daniel Abbott, as you know, uh, Van Buren County, highly respected, and he's going to say a few words. Thank you, Daniel. So, I'll make this pretty brief. I was asked to hit on how the open borders are affecting us here in southwestern Michigan. Um, our county is actually on the southwestern part of Michigan, only Berrien's below us. I ran some numbers yesterday in our jail facility. 40% of our inmates in our jail in Van Buren County have out-of-county residence residency. Out of the 40% that do not live in our county that we're feeding every day, 10% of those have addresses from Mexico or Guatemala. Put that in perspective. We're, we are a rural community. 10% of the folks in our jail are from Mexico or Guatemala. They're not in our jail by coincidence. We didn't just see them walking down the road and saying, you know what, I don't think you belong here. They're in our jail because they committed crimes. If you look at the heinous crimes that they committed, the one that really jumped out at us is all the violent sex crimes. And it's not just against adults. It's against our children as well in our community, and that's appalling. To go even further on that, with the open borders the way they are, when President Trump was in office, our narcotic unit was buying a ball of meth, which is 3.5 ounces of meth, for $300 to $350 for a ball. As of this past week, a ball is $85 because the market's flooded by the tons coming across the open borders and semis. And when I say tons, I mean tons. It used to be a thing of the past, or it is a thing of the past, folks doing um, making the meth in their in their own residences they don't do it anymore because the cartels bringing it in by the tons they're not having to make it inside their residences hence the cheap amount that's going out and and the amount that's on the street it's disturbing i've got a few bullet points i want to really drive home to you folks um career law enforcement officers have faced incredible challenges these past four years for several reasons the drastic rise in fentanyl as well coming over the borders touched just about every family in southwestern Michigan. You guys all see it on the news on a regular basis, all the ODs and uh, domestic situations that we handle in law enforcement. We handle roughly two overdose deaths a week in our county. Keep in mind, our county is only 76,000 population. So at least twice a week, we're handling those. And those are numbers I ran yesterday. I just didn't make those numbers up. That's disturbing. It's getting in our schools. It's getting in our children's hands. It's very disturbing. It's killing our kids. It's poisoning our communities. It's making the jobs of law enforcement prof professionals much more difficult. The open southern border is the heart of lawlessness and crime you're witnessing. No, make no bones about it. We need leadership at the national level that is willing to solve this crisis. President Trump, without a doubt, is the leader we need to get the job done and get America safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Allegan County Sheriff Frank Baker to say a few words, please. Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Mr. President. It's truly an honor to be here today and talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, as well as my fellow sheriffs, and that's safety within our communities. And one of the biggest things that we're facing now, and Sheriff Abbott mentioned it, is um, the, the crime, the level of crime we're seeing, but uh, the, the amount of narcotics, the illegal narcotics, whether it's methamphetamine or fentanyl, it's devastating our communities. And something needs to be done about that. And the only way we can do anything is to secure the border. A lot of times people ask me, you know, the border's a long way from Allegan County. And yes, it is, but there's not a day goes by that's not impacting what happens in our county because of the amount of drugs that we're seeing. 
We used to be known as the meth capital of the world, jokingly people would say, because of the number of methamphetamine labs that we'd made arrests for. We don't make arrests for methamphetamine labs anymore. I mean, it's, it's a thing of the past because the illegal drugs that are, we're seeing now, the crystal methamphetamine, is so cheap, as Sheriff Abbott had mentioned, it's cheaper to buy it than it is to make it. So uh, we, we have a crisis on our hands and we need help. And uh, part of that help is going to be securing our borders. So I appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today to talk about this, this important topic to us. Because there are a lot of tragedies that are happening, and you mentioned it with Ruby Garcia. In fact, a couple of our deputies uh, made the arrest of the suspect in that case last month. So uh, it's happening in our, in our neighborhoods, even though the border is a long ways away, and we need help. And so I appreciate what you're doing to help us in meeting with us today to talk about this concern. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Great, great people behind me. Is Tom Holman here, by any chance? Tom? Tom Holman? Where's Tom Holman? Because I wanted to pay tribute to him. He is some man. And uh, I know he was around here. I said hello. I said, I might bring you up, but I'm not going to bring him up because he's not here. <laughs> he had to get back to capture people. But I just want to thank Tom Holman. He has been so special. He's been so great on television. He's been so respectful of the job that we did as an administration. We had such great numbers, and we took over a tough situation, and we had great numbers. You know, in 2016, I ran on the border. And uh, in 2020, we did such a good job. I couldn't even talk about the border. The people would say, sir, they don't want to hear about the border. I said, no, no, we did a great job. We have to talk about it. Sir, they don't care. You fix the border. The border's great. You see the numbers up there. The border's great. Uh, nobody cares about the border. And now we have today. Today, the border is a hundred times worse than it ever was in 2016. That was, I call it peanuts. That was peanuts. That was small time. And uh, today, it's the worst border anywhere, I think, in the world. There's never been a border like this anywhere in the world where millions and millions of people are coming. Thousands of people come over an hour. And uh, there's never been anything like it. We're going to fix it. We're going to close it. And we're going to do many other things that we're not here to talk about, but we're going to make our country great again. We're going to — we are not now a great country. We are a country that is in serious decline. And we're not going to let that happen to our country. We're going to fix the economy. We're going to get inflation under control. Inflation's up probably real numbers, 50 percent in the last few years, and people are being destroyed just going to the grocery store. That's why I hear it the most. They go out for groceries. They can't believe it. They're paying four and five times more than they did two or three years ago. But we're going to fix our country. We're going to be respected again all over the world. I'm going to keep you out of World War III. We're not going to have World War III. Right now, the way we're going, you're going to have World War III. And we're going to do a real job. We gave you the largest tax cut in history, largest regulation cuts in history. We took care of our soldiers. We rebuilt our military. We beat ISIS, and we didn't go into any wars. Everyone said, remember when Hillary Clinton said, look at him. He's going to get us into wars. I, don't, I got us out of wars. And uh, but we knocked out ISIS, and we knocked out everything we had to do, and we rebuilt that military to a level. Unfortunately, he gave a lot of it away to Afghanistan. But uh, as much as it was, it was a small portion compared to what we did. We built a, we rebuilt our entire military, and I'm very proud of it. We have a great military. They're not woke, like people think. A couple of people on top are. They'd like to be, but we're not. Our military is amazing. What they did with ISIS it was supposed to take four years, and it took me a couple of months to knock out ISIS 100 percent. Do you remember I had it down to 97 percent? And the media started saying, sir, it's not 100 percent. I said, I've got problems. I better do it. So we took a few more weeks, and we got it down to 100 percent, and they admit it. And uh, it's just one of those things. But the people behind me are incredible people. They're heroes. They're heroes. And you have a couple that are going to be elected very soon, and they're going to do a real job. They're going to — they love Michigan. They love the country, and they're going to do a real job. It's an honor to be here. I'll be back a little bit before November 5th. I'll be back as many times, because this is a very important state. You win Michigan, you win the election. You win Michigan, you're going to win the election. And uh, so we'll be back, and we'll be back to Wisconsin. I'm heading for Wisconsin right now, and we're going to be back there quite a bit, too. We're going, to, we're going to put it all out, because if we don't win on November 5th, I think our country is going to cease to exist. It could be the last election we ever have. I actually mean that. We don't win. I think this could be the last election we ever have. That's where our country is going. So uh, I just want to thank you all. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank you all very much. It's an honor. I'll see you soon. And uh, again, give these people a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, do you support the six week abortion ban by the Florida Supreme Court? Come on. We'll be making.
making a statement next week on abortion. We're going to make a statement next week. Okay, we're back out here live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, that concludes the president's remarks there in Grand Rapids, Michigan, talking to uh, a group of people there about the border crisis uh, that's happening right now under the Biden administration. Now, we're going to conclude that broadcast. So we're going to go ahead and we'll switch over to we're back here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where President Trump is scheduled to speak a little bit later uh, this afternoon. But first, a big shout out, good sponsors of Birch Gold Group. They are the experts in gold, silver, and precious metals. They'll show you how to convert your traditional IRA into a gold-backed IRA. It's easy to do. Simply text the words TRUMP to 989898 and get that free information kit on how you can do just that. Plus, our friends over at 1775 Coffee, what a great American company there and founded by a patriot. He's in it for the right reasons. He's got great coffee and he's got a great purpose of doing business and that is to serve the American consumers like you. He's got the best coffee. Information for that is on your screen. Take advantage of that RSBN promo code as well, 1775 Coffee and the Birch Gold Group, a great proud sponsor of today's broadcast. Now, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back at a later stream, another separate stream, and we'll have where we're live here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where President Trump is uh, anticipating to, to show up here and uh, basically uh, talk to thousands of people about not only the border, but the economy and how important Wisconsin is to this election. Now, today is election day here in Wisconsin, and a lot of people have gone to the polls, obviously, to cast their vote for President Trump as a GOP nominee, but there's some also some other initiatives on the ballot. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more as we continue our coverage here in Green Bay. But for, for that, we say so long here here from Michigan. We'll see you back here. Until next time, goodbye. God bless. What's up, guys? My name is Jaden Hurd, and I have a Christian show called Let It Be Heard, where we analyze culture and current events from a biblical perspective. I highly recommend you guys check us out. We now have episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And basically, what happens is we react to videos, we have talking points, we have on guests, and it's very exciting. Come check us out on Rumble on the RSBN channel. God bless you guys. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back, the my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. <gasps> when I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My Pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My Pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of My Pillow. Now's the time to go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your My Pillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better and cooler too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. MyPillow.com Welcome to the Right Side Broadcasting Network. We're not like the other media outlets out there that cut and edit what other people say. In 2015, we were created by our founder, Joe Seals, to cover President Donald J. Trump's speeches and rallies, to which we continue to do to this day. We've also covered important conservative events like CPAC, TPUSA, March for Life, and many other important events and hearings around the country. We were made for people like you, everyday Americans who are tired of the mainstream media, who are tired of being lied to, manipulated, and fed an agenda. Our goal here at Right Side Broadcasting is to allow you to see the truth 
giving our correspondents and commentators a wide latitude to speak their minds. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media. Your support through your donations, locals, and supporting our advertisers allows us to continue to cover important events around the country each and every day. So, from us here at Right Side Broadcasting, thank you for supporting us and the right side of history. <laughs>